Hey guys, before we get to the video, for more tips and tricks in the heating and air industry, please click that subscribe button. Thank you. Hey guys, Joshua Griffin Air serving the Middle Peninsula and the Northern Neck of Virginia and wanted to do a video because I get one question more than any other question it seems like. I get this question on my Facebook and my videos and everywhere and that is what is the best brand? Who's good, who's not? And one common trend that you'll see across our industry is most heating and air guys can just about all agree that the brand matters less than who installs it. So the installation or who installs it matters more than what brand you select. Of course, we all have our preferences. We may disagree on who's the best, but ultimately we can all agree that usually the installer matters more than the brand that they install. And so the question becomes, I've actually gotten this question, what does that mean? What does it mean to have a bad installer versus a good installer? And that's what this video is going to cover. In fact, if you found this video, we're gonna do a series of videos where we're gonna talk about bad installations, bad installers, and some examples that you as the homeowner can sniff out and find if you're getting a good installation or not. So check out this video, but check out the whole entire series and our goal is to arm you to help you figure out if you're getting a good installation or not. Stay tuned. Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna talk about package units. And I've talked about package units in other videos, but I wanted to touch on it with this series because I think it's important that if you have a package unit that the installers are installing everything the best that they can because package units, unlike a split system, has parts of your system that are exposed to the elements that they wouldn't be in with other systems. So your indoor fan motor and everything that's circulating the air that's gonna go through the system System and back into your home are all outside exposed to the elements. Making sure that that stuff is installed properly, not pulling any unfiltered air into your home, making sure that the drain is installed the way it's supposed to be. If it's a gas pack, having the gas line installed the way it's supposed to be and all that good stuff. Making sure the proper permits are being pulled and everything is approved by an inspector so that way you're protected. We'll see package units all the time where critters are being able to get into the home in some way, shape, or form because they're not installed properly. And also, when you're talking about a package unit, a lot of them will have some sort of metal shroud between the unit and the home, making sure that that's good and sealed, making sure it has some sort of fall a little bit to, so that way it, water can't collect on it and puddles can collect. I don't know about where you live, but where I live, puddles are a bad thing, especially if they stay there for a long, long time because mosquitoes like to multiply when there's big giant puddles around your home. And just in general, if it's holding water, it's more possible that it could do things like rust and things like that. Ultimately, if you're not sure, I would say take a mental snapshot or maybe even a literal snapshot of some of the other homes in the area that have package units and make sure that your system is on the up and up looking like theirs do. You may not realize how sloppy yours looks until you go and look at someone else's. Video, we're gonna talk about future issues. And what I mean by that is when the equipment is installed, thinking about the future, thinking about future technicians that have to work on that equipment and when we're talking about things like the unit being installed where the cover is now too close to the house or too close to something else and you're not being able to service it properly. We did a system not that long ago where the homeowner wanted the outdoor unit up way up in the air on metal brackets. It was a ductless system and we explained to them the problems with servicing that unit in the future and it made sense to him. But what he was telling me is another company had told him the idea of putting it way up there. I'm not saying putting systems here, there, and everywhere are necessarily a bad thing, but just thinking ahead, thinking about the unit being serviced, thinking about things that'll have clearances, 
that bush beside your outdoor unit might only be this tall now, but in a couple years, it could grow up and be up against your unit, making sure you're thinking ahead on things like that. And your installer should educate you and talk to you about things like that. Things like the indoor unit being able to be able to be serviced and get things out of it. We've seen indoor units installed with things in front of it, like a water heater or the maybe it's down in the crawl space, but it was installed in a way that you can't get the indoor fan motor out to replace it or the coil out to replace that or whatever. These things will slide right out of the unit, but if the unit was installed in a way that you're not able to do that, then you're talking about an even bigger project. And a lot of times installers could care less. They're just there getting their job done and they, can, they don't even care about the guy in the future. But just keep that in mind if you're the homeowner because you may be thinking, well, it doesn't really matter to me either, but it will matter someday, especially if you still own the home and a technician has to replace that part and it's gonna involve a whole lot more like removing the water heater to be able to replace that part. You've now taken a job that might've been this price and now it's gonna be this price because that equipment was not installed with clearances being able to be serviced. We've seen future issues with things like the PVC pipe not being thick enough. You know, they're using this thin wall, almost paper thin PVC pipe, and that starts leaking where if they would have just used Schedule 40, it doesn't cost that much more. And if it was installed properly, they wouldn't have had those issues. We'll see problems arise like mold or other types of problems with mildew and things like that being created. Water in the crawl space that develops because they didn't think ahead on the drain or things being backed up, things like that. We'll see insulation falling from the systems that are not that old. If the installers would have just thought a little bit ahead where the insulation and things like that, ultimately just thinking about the future thinking about problems that could arise and thinking about, okay, I'm looking at the system I've just installed or I'm about to install. What is a problem that could arise because of how I'm about to install it? Hope that helps. Thanks for watching. The last thing I'll say is if you're in the market for a new heating and air system and you're in Virginia in the Middle Peninsula or the Northern Neck, Give Griffin Air a call. We'll give you a free estimate and the best warranty in the area. But if you're not in our coverage area, check out my new website. I've even got a little banner up here, newhvacguide.com. Check out that site because we've put so much information on there. It's as if I wrote a book telling folks, hey, here's the good and the bad avoid this or that. I've even got a whole page called no-nos, things to stay away from. And so before you spend thousands, check out that website. And finally, for more tips and tricks in the heating and air industry, click that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.